एवरी वन माइल सेल्फ प्रोफेसर एस के गुप्ता टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट द बेसिक्स द सोर्सेस एंड इट्स करेक्टरिस्टिक्स वेरियस टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स इन्वॉल्व इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ वेस्ट वाटर विल बी डील इन दिस कोर्स बिफोर गोइंग इन टू मेन ऑस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ वेरियस टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स इन्वॉल्व इन द वेस्ट वाटर इंजीनियरिंग वेस्ट वाटर मैनेजमेंट we need to know about the waste water so first let us see what are the concepts that is covered in this slide so that is we will deal with the brief introduction of waste water then we will also deal with the types of waste water different sources their characteristics of waste water physical chemical and biological characteristics before going into the main content let us talk about the concept behind the waste water so waste water is basically the water which is being used by various industrial purposes and the result as a effluent which may contain various forms of impurities in a concentration that may impair the quality of water for its uh, various uses so basically this is a complex uh, matrix which may contain various types of solids particulate matters microorganism nutrients various types of heavy metals and micro pollutants if we see the total composition of waste water we will see that of total waste water 99.9% is water and remaining only 0.1% is the impurities which are present in the waste water the concept on the waste water nowadays you see that has changed from waste to its a resource rather than treating the waste water as a burden now the scientific community and researchers industrial managers they are treating the waste water rather than a waste it is treated as a resource because using various reduce recovery recycling and treatment techniques we can reuse that waste water which is otherwise being discharged as a waste water before going into more detail let us talk about various types of waste water which are generated from the society so first of all the waste water we can broadly classify as industrial waste water domestic waste water and storm runoff storm runoff basically if we see that is the amount of precipitation which does not infiltrate below the ground and directly reaches to the surface water body as a runoff which may contain various types of inorganic materials like sand and silt particles which laden the waste the material into the receiving water body if we talk about the industrial waste water so industrial waste water is the waste water which is generated uh, from the industries like we have different types of industries they have different types of water demands and when this water is used in different process it may contain various types of solids materials liquid materials acids alkalis and different type of organic and inorganic impurities so when it is generated as a industrial effluent it may contains various forms of impurities in the form of suspended impurities dissolved impurities floating impurities and other types of impurities and it impairs the quality of water for its beneficial uses so broadly it can be classified as a grey water and the black water grey water basically is the water which is generated from your bathroom laundry and kitchens which does not contain any fecal contaminants like urine and feces other than this whatever the wa water is being generated from this uh, sources that comes under grey water while the water which is generated from your urinals your wcs that comes which contains various coliforms various fecal and pathogenic bacteria is termed as black water so depending upon the water generated from different sources like 
from runoff, from industries, from domestic applications, we have different strategy for its management. First of all, we talk about the different sources from where the wastewater is generated from the industries, like we have different types of industries, starting from textile, metal industries, refineries, leather industries, then pulp and paper, then we have dairy industries, then we have paint industries, metal industries. So these industries, they use various types of raw materials, acid, minerals, and ultimately when the process goes on, a lot of impurities get involved into the water, and as a result, the flame generated from these industries may contain various types of inorganic impurities, organic impurities, coloring compounds, dyes, heavy metals. So water generated from industry, that basically depends upon the type of raw material we are using, the type of acids we are using, the amount of alkali we are using, and accordingly the effluent characteristic is generated from different industry. That's why the water which is generated from industry cannot be categorized, cannot be given as comprehensive characteristic rather than the characteristic of this wastewater generated from industry to industry will vary depending upon its process and operation. Let us talk about the storm runoff. As I defined, the storm runoff is the part of uh, precipitation which does not infiltrate below the earth surface, below the ground, and directly meets to the surface water body. That may contain various types of sediments, sand, and silt particles, which have a lot of potential to erode of erosion and can aid a lot of sediment load into the receiving water bodies. When the surface runoff flows onto the earth surface, it may also dissolve into human-made, man-made contaminants to the wastewater that may contain pesticides, fertilizers, and many other impurities which we use uh, into agricultural and other operations. So agricultural runoff, mostly we are looking upon because it has a lot of potential to cause nutrient pollution and this nutrients rich stream then may turn into eutrophied streams having involved into various stages of eutrophication. Then these slides will indicate you the various types of pollutants, the common pollutants which are normally found in the wastewater like suspended impurities, Iron and silt particles, iron and grease, like if we have listed 13 impurities starting from 1 to 13, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to this 6, like pathogens, nutrients, biodegradable organics, sand and silt particles, suspended impurities, they are very common in the domestic wastewater, while the impurities listed from 7 to 13, like inorganics, Salts, mineral acids, metals, metal compounds, non biodegradable organics like fatty pollutants, refractory organics, calcitant organics, various types of heavy metal, toxic metals, pesticides, which are mostly generated from the agricultural runoff, synthetic detergent, and many other variety pollutants that may be present into the industrial wastewater. That's why the characteristic of municipal wastewater, if we see from place to place, little bit it varies, it remains more or less uniform. Whereas in case of industrial wastewater, the characteristic of wastewater varies from industry to industry and will depend upon the type of industrial activities, the raw material processes and the technology being adopted by particular industry. This slide basically deals with major characteristics of the wastewater, like if we broadly classify the characteristic of wastewater, they may be classified as physical characteristic, chemical characteristics, and then biological characteristics. So physical characteristic are those parameters which may be determined by using physical methods, whereas the chemical characteristics or the parameter or the chemical constituent which may be 
determined by using various analytical techniques which uses various chemicals and reagents and involve a set of analytical procedures like DO, BOD, COD, EOC, total nitrogen, phosphorus, chloride, sulfate, alkinity, various types of chemicals that are present into the wastewater. And then we deal with biological characteristics which may contain like various types of bacteria, algae, fungi, viruses, protozoa. For this, there is a detailed procedure for analysis of identification of bacteria, analysis of bacteria, algae, fungi. So this is, this type of impurities normally comes under bi biological characteristics. And then we talk about, we start with the physical characteristics, which may like the color. Color is in, basically indicates the stage of the wastewater from its generation, like the age when the wastewater is generated. Like the wastewater, if you see, as far as municipal wastewater is concerned, it is having light brownish to gray color, which may become gray, dark gray and black depending upon the stage of its decomposition. As soon as the wastewater is generated, there are the bacteria, they undergo anaerobic decomposition and get stabilized in the due course of time. The color of the wastewater also changes depending upon its degree of degradation and accordingly by seeing the color of the wastewater we can identify whether the sewage is fresh sewage or it is stabilized or it is of uh, under septic conditions. So different forms of the wastewater, different conditions of the wastewater we can determine by analyzing the color of the wastewater. As far as the color is concerned in the industrial wastewater, that may be also due to the presence of various types of metals like iron and manganese, humus and peat material, plankton and beads. They have different peculiar color and may give rise to the color of the wastewater. Color may be also attributed due to the presence of various types of dyes and coloring pigments present into, used into the various process during industrial operation. Analysis of the color indicates many more objective driven aspects in the industrial wastewater management and the unit we, for its measurement is hazard, that is true color unit. Then another aspect that is order. Order in the industrial wastewater is very common and that may be because of release of various odorous compounds and gases which are produced during degradation of organic compounds in the industrial wastewater. So major order causing compounds if we see that is hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, scatols, mercaptans, amines and indoles. Order is basically measured by its threshold order and that is the unit we, we have ppm, part per million. Then we have another list of the compounds which may have uh, different types of order like if we see presence of amine will give fissy order. So this is the chemical formula for amines and then we have ammonia, this is like inorganic gases which are produced will give ammonical order whereas diamines if it is present it will give decayed less order whereas hydrogen sulfide if it is present it will give rotten egg color and presence of mercaptans basically it gives us the decayed cabbage cabbage like when it is decayed the kind of smell the kind of order we receive that may be because of presence of methyl or ethyl mercaptans so there are butyl and protyl are also mercaptans and they have a skunk type of order. Whereas the organic sulfides, if they are present, they will also have the order like rotten cabbage. Similarly, scatols, they will also provide like the order of fecal matters. So these are the peculiar orders are being generated from different odorous compounds present into the wastewater. 
Then the next parameter, the physical parameter, what we talked about is the temperature. So as you know, temperature is one of the very important parameter which determines the degree of the reaction of the bacteria, the rate of reaction of the various chemical reactions. And as per the effluent discharge standard, like any wastewater which is having temperature, which is heated, cannot be directly discharged into the neighboring uh, downstream water bodies as if it increase because it will it may increase the temperature of the receiving water bodies that may initiate dissolution of DO content into the water and the DO level into the water will be decreased. It may also increase the rate of biological degradation of the organic matter which will consume a lot of organic dissolved oxygen and may reduce the DO content into the wastewater. Bacterial action also increases at higher temperature, which may result into accelerated depletion of DO levels into the water bodies. This is the major effects of the temperature, like it will increase the rate of reaction. It can also increase the rate of dissolution of the solids. It will also have the impact on the viscosity of the water, which gets reduced because of increase of the temperature, which may have various impacts on the industrial waste water. Then the major physical impurities that comes under characterization that is uh, total solids, that is the total solid content of the industrial waste water basically defines the strength of inorganic and organic solids present into the waste water, which can be analyzed, which can be defined as the Total residue that is obtained after heating the water sample, wastewater sample at a temperature of 105, 103 to 105 degree centigrade till it attains a constant temperature. So these solids, they may be basically present in the different form that may be floating solids, which may float onto the surface of the uh, water, second type of solids, which have a specific gravity more than one, mostly inorganic in nature, they will settle down, they have the nature to settle down, so they are classified as a settleable solids. And then we have also some colloidal solids are the solids which are of very fine size, like less than micron size and are present in colloidal stage. Whereas the dissolved solids, they are present in the dissolved form, like various or organics and inorganic impurities which are dissolved into the water which have a size range less than 10 minus 10 raised to the power minus 9 like in angstrom size range those solids they come under this category so a little bit more details about the types of solid their size and the types of uh, impurities like if we see this on the x-axis, we have plotted the size, particle size, as on the x-axis, we have different types of solids like suspended solids, collides, and dissolved solids. So here, dissolved solids, if we see that is the size range less than 10 raised to the power minus 9, whereas if we see of colloidal solids, so they are like the particle size having less than 1 micron, and they lies within nano, nano size like the 10 raised to the power minus 9. Whereas suspended uh, solids will have size more than 1 micron, uh, nearly 10 to 100 micron. This sand and silt present that comes under this suspended solids while uh, the very fine silt size and the clay that comes under the colloidal uh, impurities whereas the uh, algae which are present in the water which is which comes under suspended and colloidal solids size range whereas bacteria also if we see they are present both in suspended and colloidal stage whereas the virus if we see they are mostly in colloidal stage. So removal of these very fine and coarser impurities like sand and silt particles becomes a big problem for wastewater to be managed to be reused, to be recycled. So determination of this type of impurities 
their different form present into the waste water that is very very important so here we see the test procedures like what are the various types of solids how we can determine these solids what are their methodology normally we follow methodology standard methods as published in APHA manual that is American Public Health Association so this is like if we see that is to total solids so total solids are like all the solids which are present if we evaporate our uh, wastewater sample at a temperature of 103 to 105 degree centigrade till it attains the constant weight so whatever the solids are uh, residue that will be remained after evaporation at this particular temperature if we weigh down so whatever the amount will come that comes under total solids and they are mostly measured in terms of milligram per liter then we have total volatile solids these are the solids which are volatile in nature so if the solids what are obtained after heating 103 to 105 degree centigrade if we further heat this residue at a temperature at a little higher temperature that is 500 plus minus 50 degree centigrade then the volatile compounds present into the, uh, this residue that will be volat volatilized and burned off when the temperature is enhanced to 500 degree centigrade and whatever is being uh, left out that is basically the fixed uh, solid whereas whichever is being evaporated that will be counted as total volatile solids. So there is different test procedures classify the volatile solids, fixed solids and the total solids. Similarly now if we try to find out different forms of solids like the solids which are present in suspended form, the solids which are present in the dissolved form. So we have again different procedures. So for this suppose we have to obtain the total suspended solids so we have to again use a filter paper filter the entire wastewater samples at temperature of 105 degree centigrade and then evaporate the residue remained on the filter paper at a temperature of 105 degree centigrade then whatever will be remain that will be termed as the total suspended solids whereas whatever the filtrate now again in the total suspended solids if we see if we need to find out the volatile fraction of these total suspended solids then we can again this uh, heat the samples at 500 plus minus 550 degree centigrade and whatever is being evaporated or volatilized or burned off during this temperature hike that amount of solids are mostly they are volatile in nature and whatever is being uh, remain as a residue after this temperature that comes under fixed suspended solids. So that residue which is remain that is fixed and the amount of suspended solids which got evaporated which got burned off at a temperature of 500 degree centigrade that will be treated as the total, uh, total volatile suspended solids. And then we talk about the TDS. TDS is one of the important parameters which we obtain after filtrating the sample. Whatever the filtrate is remain. So that filtrate if we again heat it at 180 degree centigrade till it attains the constant weight. The amount of solid that will remain as a residue that will be treated as a total dissolved solids. And they are basically present in a size range of 0 0.001 to 1 micron. And then similarly in this total solids again if we need to have the volatile fraction of dissolved solids. So again the sample has to be heated at a temperature of 500 degree centigrade. And then whatever the residue remain that will indicate the fixed uh, dissolved solids whereas which is being burned off which is being volatilized that portion of the solid that will say about the volatile suspended solids. 
and then we are uh, having more interest on the removal of these solids basically suspended solids so for that we again classify the suspended solids in two forms that is set level solids and non set level solids so for this we we have a special type of cone known as half cone and in a in half cone we fill with the 1 liter of waste water sample and try to let uh, the sample get settled the amount of set level solids which have the specific gravity more than one they will be settled faster as compared to the other impurities that set level solids which are settled after a period of 1 hour that solids they are termed as the set level solids and this were the major physical characteristic of the waste water similarly we have the more detailed characterization of the chemicals or the chemical impurities which are present in the waste water they comes under chemical characterization and that includes various types of acids various types of metals acidity alkalinity hardness many many more parameters so one by one we will deal with the chemical characteristics of the waste water so uh, the very first chemical characteristic that comes in our mind that is the ph ph basically is the very important parameter in when we look upon the industrial waste water management so this is basically defined as the negative logarithm of the uh, hydrogen ion concentration to the base 10 that is minus log 10 molar concentration of hydrogen ion concentration so this is basically the potential uh, hydrogen ion present into the waste water the ph basically defines whether the water is acidic whether the water is alkaline in nature and how much content of the hydrogen or hydroxyl ions that are present into the waste water so this typically chemically we write this h2o if ionized they will be present in the form of h plus ions and oh ions and if we write k k will be equal to its ionization constant and that is h plus ions into oh ions divided by mo molar concentration of h2o that is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 40 so if we see that our water is pure then this molar concentration of water that will become 1 and thus the dissociation constant that is kw which is obtained from this chemical reaction molar concentration of h ion into molar concentration of oh ion and, and that will give equal to 10 to the power minus 40 so now if we measure h plus ions or oh ions we can get the ph value of the water or poh value of the water which will define the acidic or alkaline nature of the waste water so if ph is less than 7 the waste water is termed as acidic waste water if the ph is 7 more than 7 it is termed as alkaline waste water and if the ph is 7 exactly 7 then it means the water is neither acidic neither alkaline if we see upon the domestic waste water typically it has slightly alkaline nature and it varies from 7 to 7.5 whereas in case of industrial waste water this may be acidic may be alkaline depending upon the process the type of inorganic acids and uh, bases that are used in the operation and will entirely depend from industry to industry so this is the way how we can measure the ph so that is uh, we use ph electrode so this electrode if is dipped into the water samples and whatever the reading we get here that is like currently this is 7.89 so it gives little alkaline nature of the waste water so this is a simple technique we have to dip the electrode into the waste water sample directly it will analyze the h plus ions and accordingly the reading for your ph will be displayed over this ph meter then many other important characteristic we will go through the first one that we go through that is the inorganic salts so inorganic salts 
that may cause a scaling problem to the pipelines that may cause a nutrient problem into the waste water that may cause hardness of water so that may make the water acidic that may make the water alkaline so there are different types of inorganic salts and uh, that depends upon the type of raw material and the process operation the industries they are using and they can have different impact depending upon the type of inorganic salts if they are present in the wastewater so like if there is a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus they will induce the growth of microbes microscopic plants like algae and that may cause the eutrophication process and then we have different types of acids and alkali as i told there are this acid addition of acid will increase the acidity in the water because of use of various types of bases and alkali material during the process that will result alkaline nature of waste water so this depends upon the type and amount of acid and alkalis we used into the process then we have uh, organic matter basically organic matter of uh, prime concern in the industrial based water more the organics present it will exhaust the oxygen resources of the river body during its decomposition because organic matter most of the organic matters they are biodegradable they are not there are also the organic matters which cannot be degraded but the organic matters which are biodegradable in nature immediately that undergoes its uh, decomposition and that will take consume the oxygen present into the water bodies and will cause depletion of co level in the uh, receiving waste streams and critically for survival of any fish or aquatic life the do level in the stream body that should never decrease by 4 mg per liter as it may affect the survival of these uh, microorganisms aquatic life present into the water bodies then we have various types of toxic chemicals industries use they may be organic they may be inorganic in nature and many of these compounds are not removed mostly in our conventional treatment process and have a cumulative impact on to the biological system then we have uh, microorganisms like where there are industries like tanneries slaughter houses they discharge the waste water containing various types of bacteria that may be harmful to the human health and the environment so these bacteria which assist in degradation of organic matter aid in as a seeding material also a steam and accelerating occurrence of oxygen sac curve in the water because during its decomposition do level will keep on decreasing and it will try to deplete the do oxygen uh, level into the water body and then we have a pathogenic bacteria which have direct impact on to the human health and will cause various types of water borne diseases along with uh, various other impacts on to the aquatic lives and the quality of the water then we have many types of radioactive materials which are present and they have the cumulative damaging effects on to the living cells and then in the industrial waste water there are also the foam producing matters they are of prime importance as far as treatment of waste water is concerned and these foam producing matters they are mostly discharged by various industries like textile industries pulp and paper mills and other chemical plants uh, so these also have a potential to deplete out the oxygen from the receiving water body so these are the few chemical characteristic of the waste water that we have discussed there are many more and that we are going to discuss in the forthcoming lectures my next lecture thank you